Welcome to PartialArc.com. Don't do that. You find yourself in a tavern. Yo, we should have checked for traps. I knew he forgot something. I think I can reason with him. You killed his father. Can I have sex with it? You could certainly try. I'm going to touch the sword. Don't touch the sword. The child is evil, right? Obviously. I could cast fireball. Always cast fireball. All right. Roll for it. Hey, Uncle Stu, can you tell us an All Raven's Eve story? Yeah, it'd be great. I mean, we certainly have, I think the apocalypse is over, so I think we could all use a little bit of a, uh, something to take our minds off all the recent trauma. I oh. know, last time we thought it was going to be over, it wasn't. Well, that's true. We thought going to that castle would mean some sort of peace and respite from our uh, atrociously horrible lives, but that didn't happen. Lay, kids, let's not, let's not worry about the problems. Everything's okay for, for now anyway. I mean, I guess that's true. I woke up today. Yeah, you know, any day you wake up is a uh, a victory. The sky stopped burning. Oh man, that was wild. Just living is a battle, man, but we we make it through every day. Yeah, <laughs> we do. And and I think we're ready now for just our ordinary traditions. I think we haven't done an All Ravens Eve in a while. Yeah, every- last last All Ravens Eve, we sort of there was the troubles. Yeah, um, we yeah, were- well, those pumpkins came alive and then attacked us. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I well, I dealt with them, right? I got my axe. I punched one of them here That's and there. True. But That's certainly how I remember it, and there's no evidence to suggest how it actually happened. It was a real exciting adventure. But we didn't see it or hear it. Yeah, I'd love for you to recount it sometime. But not tonight. Not right now, though. <laughs> a different one. Yeah, because oh, yeah, I don't really remember that story super well, and I feel like I'm not prepared to tell that one. Well, let's tell a story you are prepared to tell. Yeah, it'd be great. I guess it is all Raven's Eve. We should tell a story. Yay! Wee! <laughs> Okay, so I've been looking at doing different sort of stories. All the stories I've been telling you about, like, brave adventurers and heroes and then maybe some darkness and they fall to darkness and stuff like that. But it's always been, like, you know, fighters and wizards and rangers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, the world around us, the ordinary world. Yeah, everyday world. Yeah, exactly. Very realistic fiction. But I want to tell you some fantastical fantasy <gasps> stories. Oh my God, he's taking out his world-building binder. Whoa, that's crazy. He I've, never lets us see it. Is this the project that you've been working on for years? Yes, I've created an elaborate alternate history. I've presupposed a world where magic doesn't really exist, or if <gasps> it does, it's on like the fringes of society. Whoa. And instead, everyone uses technology. To do what? Yeah, like everything. To travel, to fly, to kill. What? Use technology to kill? Yeah, imagine like a bow and arrow, but like metal and technology. Like a spear? Like we have those. You put them in a big bow and arrow and they fire big spears. No, like a small, a small metal thing, but it's moving so fast because I don't want to get, you'll you'll see. I'll explain it all in context. Oh, there's handouts. Oh, wow. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. And it's all set in this fantastical world called earth in particular in this story is going to take you named place it dirt no earth is the name of the whole planet wow that seems really really yeah. lazy that's the name of everything though like, yeah. like the ground you know like how we have yeah i i know well i also was thinking of calling it terra i've been going with different sort Ooh, of names i like that one mm. let's make sure that catches on and everyone only calls it that okay we'll see uh but this is going to take place in... I actually have this whole huge history I've been writing out for it. It's, okay. Uh, I, won't, I won't bore you, but this one is... Take, Whoa, the Mesopotamian era. What's going on here? That, that's where I got started, actually. Oh, uh, wow. You know, the, the, this is, this, that's Hammurabi, and he starts writing some stuff. It's French like, Revolution? There's a lot of blood in this chapter. Yeah, there's... Well, I... Look, I haven't been able to do as much adventuring these days. Who's take, Napoleon? He's an example of uh, when morals go. Uh, look, let me tell you, th- we're not talking about Napoleon. This is oh. going to take place. It's in the 1930s. Okay. 1930s yeah. is, is that supposed to mean? Okay. It's, no, it's 1,930 years after the birth of an important religious figure, but actually isn't really the birth of that religious figure. Uh, see, it's a yeah, little it bit more. It says here com- it happened in April. Yeah, it's it's very complicated. Uh, wow, you've created lies and confusion within your own historical narrative. That makes it feel really rich. This is really in depth. Yeah, I, I, and I'm trying to get it published. I've been talking to going a couple different places. And maybe maybe when civilization rebuilds. 
yeah, you know, maybe maybe when things are over, I, I'll be a best-selling author with this alternate history story. That sounds like really someone would do a lot with that. Uh, but but anyway, I want to try out uh, this little story. It, it's actually a little bit fantastical, but it's a it's a mystery. <gasps> Ooh! But it's like a spooky mystery because I know it's all <gasps> Ravens. So I want to make it. I want to make a spooky. That would mystery. make sense. Yeah. yeah, it's fitting. So it takes place in a magical place called Hollywood. <gasps> is it like a, a forest like a deep forest no it's a big city where Ooh. dreams are made <gasps> uh, this is Mike and I am playing Gregory Edward Lark he's a private investigator he's got to run a bad luck veteran of the great war uh, the only one you know the, the war that ended all wars pretty much uh, yeah, we're not going to no more. We, we're not this. gonna have another one. That we think. I think we fixed it all. I think we solved all our problems <sighs> with that one. Um, and I'm just trying to, you know, make my way through, uh, you know, the police of Los Angeles. I'm definitely not very corrupt. Wait, are you with the police or are you a private investigator? Uh, well, so here's the thing. My family is with the police, um, and I try to emulate them, but I'm also like. I'm real easy to take uh, bribes and hush money and give it out and like I'm I'm a private investigator but like you work with the police I work with the police a lot especially when people want things to disappear oh okay cool you're you seem like a good guy yeah yeah I'm definitely if you want a problem to just go away I'm glad we kicked this off with our number one hero of this adventure <laughs> call Greg Lark hi I'm Megan uh, I'm playing Barbara Coleman she is a screenwriter she goes by the uh, pen name Harvey Gold. She is Jewish and very much holds on to her faith. That's one of her pillars of sanity, as it were. Driven by curiosity, and her dear friend just died, and she wants to find out why. All right. Ooh. This is Jay. Hey, everybody. I'm playing Lamont Kane. And Lamont Kane is a dilettante. Uh, he's doing pretty well for himself. Um, he is a big believer in bringing back uh, magic, um, like quite literally like magicians, people doing stage magic. Um, his father didn't appreciate that, but he's emulating kind of what his grandfather used to do when he was running the big magician circuit like a long time ago when it used to be something people would go out and see pretty frequently. But, you know, just a rich guy buying up as much magic stuff as he possibly can. Um, he's driven by a thirst for knowledge, um, and his pillars of sanity are family and Epicureanism, I believe is how you say it. Epicureanism. Exactly how you said it is just how I said it. <laughs> Lovely. Yep. And do we want to define that for our listeners? Or just yeah, let's, no, let's, everybody's just rushing to Google. <laughs> what is that? Uh, it's a, a, a thirst for all things of the world can offer, right? It's a, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the great experiences of the world. If you, know. you can drink it, you should drink it. If you can eat it, if you can eat it, you should eat it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you can do other things to things, you should do those things as well. Yes. Explore it all. <laughs> Go nuts, people. It's it's close to hedonism. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pleasures of the flesh. There right. you go. Hedonism, yeah, hedonism's better named cousin. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sandra, and I will be playing Josephine Viceroy. She's a professor over at UCLA, and one of her drives is scholarship. She's basically trying to make her way in the academic world, especially during these times it would be particularly difficult so she's um just making a name for herself and it's working really hard and kind of got roped into this i'm daniel as i mentioned i'm going to be the game master for today uh today's going to be a little bit different uh we're not going to be set in a fantasy world we're going to well it's not a real world either but it's going to be set in 1932 los angeles the great depression is still in full swing um Yay. hoover's still president uh 1932, though, interestingly enough, the Olympics are coming to Los Angeles. It's 1932. Uh, you know, there's no internet. There's no TVs. People listen to the radio. People go to the movies a lot. Prohibition is still a thing. Uh, alcohol is not legal to be uh, sold or produced in the United States. Uh, this is a big issue for people coming in from other countries for the Olympics. Hmm. Uh, they they kind of find it, like, very frustrating. Probably. Yes. And uh, Oh, my team just won. Let's go out and... Have ourselves a nice slice soda of cake. A soda pop, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. And a cigarette. <laughs> and we're going to open up with the four of you. 
You have been contacted by Landers Jennings, who is a lawyer. He works for the law firm of Wellman, Landers, and uh, Welburn. And you are being called in to investigate the death of Addison Wilson, who's a very rich man. Uh, he is involved in all sorts of things. Uh, he helps found United Artists. He uh, has quite a bit of money. He invests in many different social causes. And he is dead. Now, he has a very important family. And you have been called in to investigate the situation. Now, you're not police officers. But Wilson's estate is open to you, and you've been uh, you've all gone up there. Maybe you've gone together. Maybe you've gone separately. You don't all necessarily know each other. But you've all been brought in by Jennings, who has now welcomed you into the home and is now going to uh, uh, chat with you as you are you're coming into this uh, uh, beautiful estate. It's a, it's a relatively large manor, uh, two stories tall. It's uh, in the hills right outside of town in the Hollywood Hills. And um, there's a there's a nice little garage next door because he, he has a car. Like, more people have cars now than, you know, they did in the past, but still not a ton of cars in the United States just yet. And uh, you're welcome into the, uh, the beautiful sort of entryway. There's a big old staircase going in. You don't see any body, but you've heard that Wilson is dead. So Gregory Lark walks in, and he's... A sort of scruffy looking man in his late 40s, early 50s. Some hair that is not yet grayed, but mostly he's crossed the threshold from salt and pepper into getting towards just salty. The almost beard on his face is completely shock white, and it's not quite a full beard to look deliberate. <laughs> in sort of like a leather trench coat and a hat, of course, because I'm a, I'm a gentleman, you know, we all wear hats. And I'm just sort of surveying and looking around. And everything is pristine. I'm assuming this isn't the yes, scene yes. of any. This sort isn't of the scene of any sort of crime. No, incident. Like blood everywhere. <laughs> right. But is there anything like? Is Jennings the only person here, or is there any staff still here? Uh, he is the only person here. Uh, if you have assess honesty, you can use it to uh, get a feel for how he what he's thinking about the situation. Do I do. I have two points in assess honesty. All right. You don't need to spend any points for this. This is not hard to figure out. You can get the feeling that he's dealing with you in particular, but this whole situation sort of against his better judgment. Uh, he seems like he's uncomfortable with the, this situation, the way it's going. Um, but besides that, uh, he says, uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, once once everyone's here, we'll, we'll head over to the crime scene. Uh, thank you for your discretion in this matter. Of course. Uh, Addison's father... Uh, does not want his death uh, getting out in the papers. The L uh, he says that the L.A. Times are jackals, mm. and uh, if they were to find out that uh, if they were to find out that Addison was dead, it would uh, it would be an embarrassment to the family. Sure, I mean, and they will find out that he was dead. Obviously, they're not they're not going to keep that away. But the cops have been known to take um, information to the press. How old was Addison? He was in his, uh, I believe he was 37, 38. Mm, it's young. Yes, well, it I mean, was imagine, not natural I imagine we'll get into causes. this more once everyone's here, so I don't want you to have to is, is repeat that, yourself. Yes, so. is that is that somebody coming up right now? I see a, a very shiny car. <laughs> you see a, a shiny, like white car like it is like has no dirt on it it must be cleaned by someone probably every day um pulls up with like a silver trim some gold on the front it's did they have they didn't have in the 30s did they have like a rolls royce kind of equivalent back then i mean rolls royce i don't believe it was specifically a brand yet. A so don't, don't quote a, me on that it's a ford's royce pulling up <laughs> um they made one limited run and i bought most of them um they pull this one pulls up um, I'm not driving. I have a driver because <laughs> uh, I'm about two drinks deep. Um, and I pop out, wave off the driver. Um, I'm still holding my glass, and I come through the front door. Um, is uh, Landers here? That that's me. Oh, Landers, you're um. God, I think I saw you. Did you attend the seasonal uh, event last year at Old? Uh, was it Margaret's? What's your what is your credit rating? My, my credit rating is a seven. All right, you can uh, you can use a one point spend of your credit rating to have to establish a personal relationship with Jennings, okay. like you are buddies, like going way back. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll spend one point to establish that I had uh, some relationship with uh, Jennings 
I think I uh, I saw him in a very awkward moment at like a pre a previous party. Yeah. Um, uh, he'd gotten a little bit too much of the sauce. Okay. Um, old boy, it's good to see that you're uh, back on the mend. Last time I saw you, at, it was Margaret's. I remember because you were in the Swan Fountain, and I think we all remember that scenario. Ah, uh, Mr. Kane, it is such a pleasure to see you again. I'm I'm. It's a shame that we have to meet on such uh, uh, dire circumstances. Yeah, it's um. It's a real bummer. I mean, but, uh, Addison was, uh, he wasn't a friend of mine from school, but uh, I definitely enjoyed the, the circles he traveled in, and he was definitely an interesting character, that's for sure. He left me, he said he was going to leave me if he ever passed um, an old antique chess set that he said he found abroad. He does have that still on the property, does he? I believe so. Uh, we're still going through his will at the, at the moment. Okay. Uh, if, there's, if there's anything to be, to be given out, you, you will be contacted. Oh, okay, perfect. Well, um, uh, is the kitchen this way where I can get some mixers? Uh, I'm, by the way, I'm standing here just the whole time just sort of watching you, and we've met. Yeah. <laughs> we've definitely met before. I turn to you, Greg. And how how have we met? Has it been in unfortunate situations? For you, I found myself very fortunate afterwards. Jim, is it? Not even close. Gre- Gary, is it? I don't say anything. I'm just wait. Mm. I feel like I've seen you before mm. somewhere. Perhaps. The, the- I'm, I'm uh, Lark. You can call me Lark. Lark. Right. Um, the the kitchen is over here. Uh, he uh, Addison only had uh, one person on staff. He liked to do things for himself. Uh, and Mr. Chan is currently out of town. We don't really know where uh, he is at the moment. Mr. Chan's out. Why is he out of town? That is one of the questions we hope to discover today. All right. Well, I guess I'll make a drink for myself. You sure? And he just kind of stands there <laughs> awkwardly looking at both of you. Like, waiting for one of you to go make him a drink? All right, I guess I'll figure this out. And he walks off to the next room. All right. Um, the murder did not take place in the kitchen, so you're okay. Sweet. Um, uh, who who wants to arrive next? I will arrive next okay. in a taxi. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of awkward, uh, just not really knowing exactly why I have been called here. Uh, I'm, I was dear friends with Addison, uh, he was in one of my movies that I wrote, High Noon. I have glasses and a tight brunette bun, and I'm wearing a brown cardigan and a skirt, and I yeah. just kind of awkwardly make my way into yeah. the mansion. Now, now Addison was not, uh, he did not star in a lot of movies. He was in more of a producer role, but he did like to get like little cameos. He would yes. love to, he loved to be filmed and like be in the, <laughs> be in the backgrounds of shot or get like one or two like key lines in, right. in the film. But he mostly was in a producing role. He actually started, uh, he kind of founded United Artists when he was extremely young with all the other people there. He was 18 oh, wow. when he, uh, when he put a lot of his family money into founding a studio that would uh, let artists have better control over their work. Jeez. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, United Artists. Yeah, like that's <laughs> like it, UTA. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I figured. Yeah. yeah, this is like this is real. Like you found it with. I I believe you. <laughs> yes, you, we will be finding that today. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, references to historical things. Um, mm-hmm. If you really want to know what's historical and what's not, uh, I don't know. Hit me up on Twitter. I the can Ford give you some Royce info. is not a thing. <laughs> Ford Royce not a thing. You're probably driving a Roadster. <laughs> what? Also, Ford the, Royce was real. Also, uh, Addison not not a real person. Um, oh, was, okay. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> But uh, as you're coming in, uh, you are you are greeted at the door by Jennings, who says, "Oh, uh, Miss, oh goodness, uh, Coleman." Coleman. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so oh, sorry. No worries. Uh, Miss Coleman, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you, the two gentlemen are here. Uh, we have one more person who's going to be coming. Uh, thank you so much. Are you have heard about uh, Addison's? Yes, unfortunately. Yes. All right, Mr. Wilson uh, said you were a dear friend and to be trusted in case anything uh, occurred, which is. Why you've been called in today? Please uh, make yourself comfortable. We'll be heading over to the study where um, the body was found in, in just a moment. Oh wow! Yeah. All right, all right. Um, I come up. I'm walking. I, yeah, yeah. You're just. I'm, I'm just walking up. Um, she is wearing navy. I don't know why. For some reason, I just imagine her wearing the color navy, like mm-hmm. a navy suit of sorts, and a hat, like one of those fancy. Sort of floppy. No, well, not floppy, but you know, like, like one with like a, a cap, or like a cap almost. Yeah. You yeah. Know, like, like, it's like with a sideways like with a sideways yes, slant, like a sideways slant. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it's like probably yeah. pinned in that doesn't just sit there. You have to pin it in place. Got it. That's cool. what she's wearing. 
Sorry I'm late. I was sidetracked grading papers, but hopefully not too delayed. No, no. Um, it, Mr. Uh, Wilson uh, spoke very, very highly of you. Um, I know that he consulted with you on uh, some matters before his death. And uh, he said that you should be one of the people that is contacted in case uh, anything goes goes Inter- amiss. Interesting. Which is, uh, Happy to be of service in any way I can help. Yes, yes. Uh, I must. Uh, well, it, it appears everyone's here. Uh, if I could uh, speak to all of you together. Um, uh, uh, Lamont comes out of the kitchen. He has a cigar now that he found. Uh, uh, just shaking a dead man's cigars, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, he's not going to use them. Come on. All what? right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, uh, so much for, for, uh, coming here. I must, uh, I, I wish that you were all coming here under or better circumstances, as I said, but, uh, Addison, uh, Addison Wilson is, is dead. And in his, his will, he said that, um, uh, the trustworthy people should help, uh, deal with if he were to pass away violently and, his father has uh, made sure that that is the case. Uh, I don't know if you know Mr. Mr. Wilson's uh, last name was not originally Wilson. Uh, he was born a Hurst. Um, and his father is, he's the first son of uh, William Randolph Hurst. I'm sure you are aware of Mr. Hurst. Um, he has been estranged from his father. Um, he took his mother's uh, last name uh, when he discovered his father's uh, Infidelity, and ah. uh, has uh, been more or less uh, abandoned by his family, but he still has qu- uh, well, uh, except for all of the money, I suppose. Um, but so his his money did still come from the Hearst fortune. Yes, uh, though he invested it uh, quite wisely and has has used it. Uh, you know, he invested in uh, United Artists and other things. Uh, but that's uh, Mr. Hearst does not want uh, any salacious information about his son uh, getting out into the media, and particularly the, the LA Times is looking for anything that could take down the, uh, the Herald, which is uh, his paper here, of course. Um, so we are not going to be involving the police in this matter. Uh, this is going to be a private matter that you four, uh, you trusted or relatively trusted uh, friends, at least according to uh, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Mr. Hurst. Wilson was a... Was 37, 36 at the time of his death? Uh, yes, yes. Why did he have such a contingency in place? That is a, an interesting question. Uh, I, I asked him this at the time. This is a relatively new addition to his, his will. Uh, how, long, how long ago was it established? Uh, four, four years ago. Well, and, and us four were, were named. Uh, he updated the names. As, uh, as time went on uh, of just people who he, he trusted. That's I'd, very interesting. I mean, look, Landers, you know I know Addison pretty well. Greg, I'm surprised you're on his list of most trusted friends. I didn't know you and Addison were close. And Barbara, of course, I've I've seen your work. Yes. Great to I don't think we've ever actually met in person before. Not in person. Lamont Kane, nice to meet <laughs> you. Woman. And um sorry, I, I was off making a drink. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm Josephine Viceroy. Oh, Josephine Viceroy. Well, nice to meet you, nice Lamont Kane. And um, but still, Greg, how do you uh, how do you know the old boy? How do any of us know anyone, Lamont? By the way, you did get it right. It is Greg. I did, didn't I? Mm-hmm. All right then. Um, as if I, I, if I could uh, show you into the uh, the, the room study, where it happened. The the room where it happened, as it were. <laughs> And uh, Landers ushers uh, you into the crime scene, which is uh, uh, Addison's study. Uh, there are three uniformed officers in there who are sort of looking around. Uh, there are, turns out there were other people here, but they were in the crime scene and not really talking Fair to you. Fair enough. <laughs> were they, they, and their cars weren't out front? Uh, they were uh, They were parked around back or something. You, so you didn't notice they're them. trying yeah. to keep this. They, yes, they are definitely trying to keep this low, low key, not yeah. not let anybody know about this. So, so when we walk in, there's sort of that exchange of like, you didn't like with our eyes, like you didn't see me, I didn't see you. Yes, we're all gonna play ball. Yes, there are uh, there are three uniformed officers and uh, one man in uh, that you recognize as uh, you. Excuse me, Greg. Oh uh, yes, that's right. It's an audio medium. <laughs> yes, Greg, you recognize as uh, somebody on homicide. Okay. Yes. So how'd the guy die? Okay. Well, his body 
is hanging limply from a mahogany column, which is uh, standing in the middle of the room. He's impaled on that by a metal javelin, approximately a yard long. That sentence ended differently than I thought it was going to. Um, The sharp end of the javelin is going through uh, Addison, through the column, and then sticking out the back. How high is he off the ground? Oh, no, he's slumped on the ground. Uh, his, oh, okay. uh, he is... I don't know if he was, like, in the air <laughs> and pales against yeah. the column. He's, uh, yeah, hanging. Uh, so yeah. I thought he was, like, suspended, but so he's pinned against the column. Oh, there's a photo or yes. a, a, an artist's rendering. Oh, yes. boy. Yes. Lovely. Yikes. Yes. Yep, that's definitely a dead man pinned slumped against a wooden column with a spear Barbara through. just turns around and vomits. Okay, that that's understandable. <laughs> Uh, in fact, uh, if Ooh. you have not seen uh, a dead body before, um, this would be an example of you having to make a stability test. This is going to be our first check of the game. Right. So I'm, I've am i seen dead. I've definitely never seen a dead body before. All right. So you're going to need to make a stability check. It's going to be a potential loss of two stability points. So the way this works is you need to roll a d6, and the challenge is four. So if you roll a four or higher, you succeed. If you fail, you will lose two stability points. Now, you may spend stability points to add to this roll. But if you spend two stability points, then you're already spending what you would have lost anyway. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. There? So, so you could spend one stability point or you could spend none. Uh, and we will see what happens there. I will spend none. Okay. I rolled a three. All right. So this is a little much for you. So you do vomit and you are going to lose two stability points. You have, you've never, now you've seen a dead body for the first time and this has shocked you a little bit. Uh, Your stability is fine until you hit zero. Uh, Then you will be uh, shaken a little bit. And then if you get to negative six, then you are, uh, your sanity is blasted and you go, (laughs) absolutely mad uh, un- uh, permanently if you get to negative 12. I'm sorry, old boy. My sanity is just totally blasted. I'm <laughs> I'm completely out of it. Blasted is literally the, the terminology it's in the incredible. game. So. Uh, I'm going to roll as well because Lamont has seen dead bodies, but more like he's intrigued about like magic and yeah. like magician-y stuff. But, like, he's not, not like seen this. murders before. Not seen a fresh murder. Yeah. Oh, four. All right. So I can, I retain my stability. Yes. I've seen a dead body. Okay. The scene itself, uh, at this point, I'm going to ask you folks to examine the scene. This is the heart of the gumshoe system, which we are playing with. And you're going to tell me the kind of abilities that you think you would like to use to investigate the scene. And I will tell you if you find anything. And also, you could specifically say, like, I want to look at this thing in the scene, even if you're not using this particular skill. Um, I'd like to, I have some points in the occult, um, okay. because Lamont is big on, again, not only studying to bring yeah. magician shows back, but also to actually look for real magic. Yes. So he's going to peruse this, is it a spear that's kind yes. of, okay. It's a, it's a, like a javelin. Javelin. Okay. Javelin, javelin. particularly. Yes. So, oh, a javelin. Yes. Oh, the Olympics. Anyways, um, yeah. so not that that has anything to do with anything, but, uh. Is, can I look to see if this is an occult javelin or in, in any of way his positioning or like if there's anything on him? And you have a cult skill? I have a four in a cult. Okay. Just looking at it, this does not seem to be, have any occult significance, any ritual killing or anything like that. Gotcha. Okay. Are there any books open in the study? Is there like a desk that has anything that's like open? Like what was the last thing he was working on? It looks like he was not actually working on anything on the desk. It looks like he was maybe walking into the room okay. when this happened. Got so it. he was not. Uh, he was he, not active. In he there. was not active in the study. Okay. Yes. I have a couple points in forensics, so... Forensics. Ooh, yes. that would be very useful here. All right. So uh, looking at the body, uh, this uh, javelin seemed to pierce him more or less uh, directly in the heart. Ooh. He would have died instantly. Mm-hmm. All right. And you can uh, take him down from the column and examine... Exam- examine? <laughs> you can take him down from the column and examine him a little bit more. You would have to remove the javelin uh, to do any more forensics work on can him. Can I get help from these two men? <laughs> Oh, I, I was actually going to talk to the cops. I have a point in cop talk. Uh, I want to see if I can maybe pick their brains and see if they've learned anything else. All right, we'll get to that in just a moment. Let's sure. uh, let's be looking at the uh, the the body. So after you, 
after uh, Lamont is done uh, looking for any occult significance, which there is none. Uh, he... It doesn't seem to be any occult significance in here. Just letting everybody know. And uh, the the homicide detective just sort of glares at you as you say that. <laughs> yes, uh, getting help from uh, people. You can you could take the body down. Look, he told me he had a haunted chess set. Okay, I'm gonna check all possibilities. All right. The body itself has uh, no uh, recent injuries outside of the javelin. The, the javelin. He seems to be uh, in good physical health, but um, noticing him as you are sort of stripping the, uh, the clothes away, examining the body, you are actually noticing he has extremely well-developed musculature, hmm. um, significantly more than uh, would you would expect from somebody who leads a relative life of leisure. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you were friends with him, but uh, he actually sort of kept this, you know, he usually wore clothes that did not uh, highlight this. Right. But now looking at his body, this is a very, very... Uh, muscular man and he has um scars all over his body in various places uh, it looks like he has been injured uh, many times in his life uh but he do- did not want to, to make that plain uh you might be able to get a little bit more information if you were to bring him into a lab do an x-ray do some more uh, work on him but from right now that's what you're uh that's what you're getting all right Yes. Seeing the scars and stuff on his body, uh, Lamont is going to go over to uh, Landers, who I assume is still hanging yes. out. Um, and because I used my, my point in credit rating to, to establish a little bit more rapport with the gentleman, um, I'd like to kind of bend his ear to ask some additional questions. Um, Landers, listen, as a personal lawyer to Addison, I'm sure you're... Familiar with some of his outside curriculars, maybe had to cover up a few things. I've noticed the man's got quite a few scarring on his body. You've had to pay anybody off or take care of anything's on the side that he didn't want known? Uh, I'll be perfectly honest. I know nothing really about that. Hmm. All right, Landers. Yes. Yes. Fair enough. All right. And you're using cop talk. You're, you're yeah. chatting with the guys there. Um, the officers, uh, the uniformed officers don't really have much to say. They're just sort of like they're, they've been there before. Uh, the homicide guy you uh, recognize as Bart Kroger. Bart Kroger. Bart Kroger. All right. And uh, he, he was kind of aloof, but he recognizes you and you start using cop talk with him like you are able to uh, relate to him as a cop. He's mm-hmm. like, okay, let me tell you straight. I think what you guys are doing here is a terrible uh, miscarriage of justice. Sure. There should not be different laws that apply to the rich than apply to the poor. But here's the thing. This was my case. Now it's your case. Here's what happens. If you fail, you don't figure out what's going on, you get blamed. If you figure out the who solved the, you know, if you figure out the murder, you get it all figured out, I'm going to get credit. So have fun. And I'm going to go investigate things that actually matter in the city and not just a bunch of dead playboys. So if you ever need to get in touch with me, you could just uh, let me know at the station. We'll have one of my guys relay a message to me. Sounds good. Did you uh, determine anything before you leave? Since there's no consequence to helping us uh, in the negative for you. Um, determine anything about forced entry into the home? Uh, no signs of forced entry that we were looking at. Uh that's definite. I mean, it's a big house, but looking at it, no signs of forced entry. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it seems like nothing was stolen, which is a little bit odd, but it seems to be my my gut says that there's nothing that uh, that there's too fishy about what's going on here. Um, I mean, obviously, there's a murder. It's bad. But um, yes, I don't think uh, Addison is covering up anything that would hurt the people of this city. Of course not. Because if he did. I would get involved, but this, this looks this like this is a point of pride. Yeah, this is else. this is a rich person, a uh, bunch of bullshit. Yes. So uh, you have fun with that. Uh, my boys are going to go. Uh, we're going to get out of here. Uh, oh, one last thing before you leave. Um, any word from Mister Chan? No, no, we have not heard from his uh, manservant, uh, Mister Chan. If you wouldn't mind just letting me know if he pops his uh, his head up, keep uh, keep an ear to the ground, if you will. You know. If we see him, I'll let you know. That'd be great. Okay. How can I tell if this dude is going to give us the time of day ever again? 
Is that uh, cop talk? You already got it. This guy, uh, this guy's not crazy about you, but also, well, like he'll probably have other cases he's working on. But if you get in touch with him, he'll get in touch with you eventually. Okay. But he probably won't reach out to us unless we make a call to him. Yes. Okay. He's not going to volunteer info unless we call him. Yes. All he's right. not going to try to keep you from completing the case, but he's got other murders to deal with in the city. Okay. The the commissioner's on his ass. The Olympics are coming into town. It's no, uh, sure, it's a whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Is there anything out of place? Do you have like, uh, evidence collection? I do not. Does anybody else? Yes, I have one point in, techn- in, uh, in evidence collection. So, Greg, using your uh, evidence collection skill, you're looking around, and you see there's uh, something sticking out a little bit uh, from underneath the rug. Okay. Uh, there's a big Persian rug over the room. As you roll it away, you see that there is what appears to be uh, some sort of uh, pedal uh, built into the floor uh, right near the entrance of the room. Okay. Yes. I, I depress it. All right. Uh, nothing seems to happen. You do see that there is, as you're looking at it more, you see that there is a wire that's uh, running from it to another part of the room. So you can follow the wire. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, while you're trying to follow the wire around, let's see, would anybody else like to uh, do something? Uh, Professor, do you, do you have anything that you would like to look at here? Anything that's can coming we, to mind? Can we look at the javelin? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, you could do uh, some analysis of it. Do you have a chemistry skill? I do. All right. So looking at the javelin, you recognize it as a a lead iron alloy. Um, Also, the head of the javelin is significantly lighter in color than the rest of it. Hmm. This probably means that whoever sharpened it to its, uh, you know, extremely deadly point did it rather recently. That's why it's a different color. It hasn't sort of melded in with the the rest of it. Somebody sharpened it very recently. Hmm. Um, Also, as you look around the room, you realize that there is one other thing in here that is made up of uh, a similar uh, material, lead iron alloy. There is a large painted statuette of a North American Indian uh, positioned across the room. You also, as you're following the wire, you realize that the wire also goes to the Indian statue. Does it appear that the Indian statue is missing a javelin? Uh, he does have a hand that does not that does not have anything in it. Got it. Okay. So definitely something mechanical. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Um, well, I, I have. I have mechanical repair. You have mechanical repair. All right. I do. So you realize that the statue's arm is articulated and can be ratcheted up into a throwing position. Oh, lovely. It is at its side, but it can be lifted up into a throwing position, and it looks like it is currently down as it has already thrown something. Um, and you realize that, like, uh, following when, the trajectory. <laughs> following the trajectory, yes, it is going straight into that pillar. And uh, after you lift it up and you step on the pedal, you realize that. As soon as this pedal stepped on, the the Indian's uh, hand goes down. Where is the pedal in comparison to the person who would get hit? If so, you were entering into the room, you would step on it, and then you would be in front of a pillar, and then you would be, you know... So it is it is triggered by the person who is struck by it. Yes, okay. it's tri- Yes, it seems to be like a trap almost. Oh, right, it's, it, but it's not like, hey, stand here, and I will walk over here yeah. and surreptitiously mm. press this pedal and get you stabbed in the chest. Yes. Okay, so this rich idiot uh, got himself killed with a spear. Yes, the statue is hollow. Interesting. Aha! I found that chess set I was looking for. Um, uh, I'll take it off your hands. If it is haunted, we might want to investigate it further for this whole grisly crime. All right. Lamont, you may want to wait until the will is fully executed. All right. I mean, he did promise me, and uh, fellow comrade. Uh, you know what? Uh, we'll talk about it later. Wait, what are you guys doing? There's a, a, a murder machine here. There's a trap. Wait, what? And then I'll just listen to you guys explain to me the whole trap <laughs> yes. scenario. All right. Uh, do any of you have skill with locksmith? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have two points in locksmith. All right. So that gives you a little general of idea of like a mechanical uh, nature and whatnot. There is a series of gears and pulleys inside of this that are keeping that were keeping the arm at a high tension, which is why I was able to fly at uh, such a rate. Mm-hmm. Um, looking at the pedal, it would uh, release a little lever that, that cuts the thing open and makes the, uh, the thing fly at an extreme thing. Um, this is not going to be able to be reactivated again soon. It would take a couple hours of repair work to get uh, the whole thing uh, back up and running if you wanted to murder somebody else with this. Uh, pressing the pedal at the moment would sort of move the arm, but not. Uh, it would just sort of move it down slowly. Not, not at the same pressure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the, uh, the high tension, uh, would you would need to rewire something in there. Hmm. This Looks is not, though. Yeah. The work inside the device, though, as you're looking at it, is new. 
some of the parts inside of it are several years old, but the exact um, the thing that was cut to uh, make the uh, trap activate at the high tension uh, is very new uh, within the past month at the latest. Was it articulated prior to that or was it converted in a way where like it was never meant to do this? It does not appear like it was ever meant to quite do this. Um, it, it had mechanical parts to it, but making it to specifically throw a javelin at this speed okay. is so it is may some... it may have moved its arm yes. with a spear in it in a fantasiful way, but, yes, but not in a life threatening yeah. way. Uh, presumably, there you don't you can't necessarily know that for sure. Mm. Okay, as you're looking around the statue, you notice that there is a symbol of a crown etched onto the base of the statue. Um, next to a series of scratches and dots. Um, this is not a recent symbol. This is when the uh, this whole thing was casted. There's a symbol of a crown and a series of dots. Does this mean anything to anybody? I take a look at it. Does it have anything to do with the occult? Uh, no. Uh, you could maybe try to look this up like somewhere. Like there might be a record of this symbol existing yeah, somewhere. Yeah, I was going to say, I would probably have access to something where I could look it up. Yeah, uh, you would have to go to the library, right. uh, like I, a library. I have points in what's called oral history. Would this kind of fall into something like people would talk about in this area? Or um, these, you don't see Native American statues too often. They're mostly for like uh, outside, like cigar stores or mm-hmm. something like that. Do um, you think you may have seen one that looks like this before? Just like one of the stores in town. But is it possible that I'm sure I've been over here a few times to hang out with Addison, the old boy? Yes. And uh, has he ever like pointed out to things and be like, and I. Got him in this one place at this one auction. He has not, but as you think about it, you do recall that you're pretty sure you've seen that statue here before. Okay. Like it's not, it's not brand new here. Yeah. What about yeah. regular history? Like I have two points in just history. No, nothing, nothing really. Histo- I mean, the the Native Americans were oppressed by, you know, right. such a, but nothing in particular about this. Okay. Yeah. Would hmm. cryptography be able to help me figure anything out uh, looking at yes looking at this it seems to be it's not necessarily like a secret code it looks like it was put in place like it's made to be very visible mm-hmm. um, not so visible that you would see it as you're walking by it it would ruin the the you know the imagery of the statue but it's very clearly made there it's not supposed to be a secret um, you don't know what the code means but it seems like it would it's supposed to mean something something yeah okay uh-huh I also have points of cryptography. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Who has locksmith? Uh, I do. We're really front loading my usefulness, really. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, I, I'm not going to be very helpful past this scene. All right. But I have two points in locksmith. So um, here's the thing you can spend, and you don't necessarily have to do this, you can spend two points of locksmith to say that you recognize the person who does this work. Or you could follow up on the uh, what the symbol means. Now, we would then be out of people who know stuff about locksmith. I believe, because no one else has it. I don't, I don't have anything very much. And no. I don't know how useful it will be later, but I, how, how would it work? Would we then roll it? No, then you just wouldn't be able to do anything. Yeah. I have two points in craft. Would I be able to see how someone like went about adjusting this statue to like change it to do this like crazy version of whatever it's supposed to normally uh, uh, do? You, you could probably figure out how they did it, but to recognize particularly like the handiwork of somebody ah, right. who did it, that yeah. is that is a uh, locksmith skill. Fair enough. That's more, that's more specific. You know what? I think it's worth just making this lead as simple as possible. I, I think it's a one shot. I will, I will take away my two points in locksmith and we will know the individual. And then if we come to a door, I'll break it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know lots about locksmithing. Smash. <laughs> All right. So uh, you recognize this as the work of a Greg Serrano. He lives in uh, he lives in Chavez Ravine. Uh, yeah, I, I know someone who could do this sort of work. Hmm. Is it is it my discretion, or how do I know this individual? Other, uh, other, do it through reputation, personally. Uh, you know, this is a guy who is uh, very good at uh, mechanical repair and whatnot. Uh, he has recently moved into Chavez Ravine. Uh, which is a uh, actually uh, for for modern audiences. That's where Dodger Stadium is now. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Yeah, they kicked all the people out of there to build a stadium. Neat, <laughs> nice. They told them they were going to build affordable housing, and then they built a stadium instead. History is full yes. of just fun, nice people doing yes. good things for good reasons. Yeah. Um, this, have I met Greg? You have not met Greg. Okay. You know him by reputation. Okay. So, uh, 
Outside of that, you don't really notice too much else in the scene unless you could think of something else that you'd like to look for. I'm, I'm more than willing to listen to it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, if you want to swing by a library at any time, you are totally allowed to swing by a library. In particular, you mm-hmm. have pretty much all of UCLA at right. your disposal mm-hmm. because uh, because of the professor here. Are there any accounting books that are in this? I always feel like it's a good idea to look in, into those things. Mm. Into his finances? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, of course. I have a point. I have a uh, point in accounting, okay. so I wanted to look into that. All right, uh, looking. Uh, this might take a while for you to to go over all of his books. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, like you could take the books with I, you. I was going to say, some, can yeah. I take them with me? Yeah. Take them with you and spend some time looking at right, them. Right. Okay. Yeah. You could uh, you could maybe do that while a couple other people go to uh, Chavez Ravine or, or something like okay. that. Like you would need to spend some time on right, your own, like to going look over at them, these. See yes. if there's anything that that is a miss. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Well, we have transportation, thanks to uh, thanks to you, Lamont. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah, we can take a ride in my car if you all want to. How many people can s- be seated in your car? How many people does a roadster sit in in the Ford Royce? <laughs> yes. I mean, of course, you could probably look this up anywhere. The size of a Ford Royce, <laughs> but it comfortably seats seven people. <laughs> That's convenient. I like it. <laughs> if yeah. it's the four of us and your driver. Yeah. And room and for no two more. And no one can more. challenge me on it because it's real, historically accurate car. <laughs> the Ford's Royce. Yes. So um, a couple other uh, leads-ish that you have. Uh, if you would like, you could speak to the police commissioner. He is the one in particular who's been uh, hired, if you will, by the Hearst family to make sure that all of this is going to disappear. Mm. Uh, so he can. Uh, you could chat with him. Uh, his name is, of course, uh, Roy E. Steckel. Though he's uh, he's pretty busy, but he's a person you could talk to at the LAPD. You also have your friend, the homicide detective Kroger. Yeah, and you have Serrano as your uh, as a lead. You could also try to investigate what this um, this crown and dots symbol is. Yeah, I'm wondering if we split this up. So perhaps um, I can take the accounting book and also go to the library to check. Perhaps the two of you, because you also know cryptography, yeah. uh, Barbara. So perhaps the two of you can investigate the crown and the books. And um, Lamont and I can go and inquire with this uh, this Greg Serrano. Fair enough. Happy oh. to do it. All right. Uh, which scene would we like to see first? Let's let the gentleman go first. I All mean, right. It is the 1930s. Okay. Okay. I, I was just thinking ours is ours is maybe going to go wrong. So. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, do any of you? own a firearm and do you keep it with you uh i do uh that's not necessarily something you have this is a question i'm asking you right now oh yes. i was like yeah. let me check my skills uh you may have uh, i mean whether if you have firearm skills you probably own no, a i gun don't have I, I have skills. 10 yeah. ranks in firearms okay so. yeah okay so you have a gun uh, do you have uh, firearm skills um i don't have firearm skills okay. um i have weapon skills because okay. i have um well we'll see it in the next scene but nunchucks I have, no yeah I yeah. Have, yeah i have weapon <laughs> skills not firearm okay yeah weapon skills firearm skills and scuffling is hand to hand those are the three sort i mean of i have a hunting rifle at my house but it's more decorative than it is yes. functional yeah. yes ha- you, owning one and being skilled with it are two different two things. very different yeah. things you <laughs> are able to use a gun if you are unskilled in it but it is it is risky? less it is risky <laughs> yes yes nice you can uh, let's uh, go to Chavez Ravine. You head into Chavez Ravine. It is uh, primarily a Hispanic community. Um, it is uh, shrinking by the day, however, as more and more Hispanics are uh, repatriated back to Mexico by the government and businesses of Los Angeles. As more and more people are fleeing the Dust Bowl and coming to California to look for work. Oh, sure. Um, the general consensus of the government of California is that white people should be getting those jobs and not Hispanic people. So even if you're born in the United States, uh, you are being shipped back to Mexico. Uh, it is yet another awesome thing that was going on in the 30s in Los Angeles. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you uh, head up to uh, Serrano's workshop. The door is closed, but uh, it, it has a little sign that says open. Uh, inquire within for uh, projects. All right. So we show up, hop out of the car, just you and me, and I guess you two are taken to UCLA. Should we meet you at the library? You can call me on my cell phone. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a nosebleed. <laughs> What's happening? I'm not in this photograph anymore. <laughs> um. Well. Yeah. We, we meet us at UCLA. Library. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm assuming we're we're gonna do our thing first because ours is a conversation probably. Right, and ours and is more research based. Yes. Yeah, so, so then we can just go meet you when mm-hmm. you're done. So. Okay, okay. So we pull up in the Ford's Royce. Sure. All right. You have a very comfortable 
you know, we have a lot of room in, you, the, in the car. You're, you're getting a lot of stairs as you're driving in this extremely nice car. Uh, drive it into. You uh, know, everybody's always giving me looks because I mean, you don't see this car as often, right? And everybody get a get a good look see at the old Ford's Royce. I think it might be your driving scarf. Why? You you don't have a you don't like my driving scarf? Oh look, we're here. Oh, here we are. <laughs> All uh, right. As I step out of the car as well, Lamont grabs his uh, cane. He left it in the car when he, he got to the house before, but it's a it's probably the oldest thing he has on him. Yep. Everything else is like probably was bought for him a day ago, and he <laughs> wears it once, and he doesn't know where it goes after that. But he has this like old black cane. It like looks like it's probably 50 years old, and it's got like a little owl on the handle at the top of it. Okay. How old is uh, Lamont? Lamont's in his mid thirties. Okay, about a contemporary uh, to, yeah. to Addison. To yeah. about Addison's age. Oh, that's yep. right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. All right, we go to the. Uh, we head inside. Uh, do you knock or just open the door? Um, I walk up and I wait as if someone was going to be there to open the door for me. I open the door and walk you inside. Open the door. <laughs> Lamont doesn't have all of the skills necessary for door knocking. Uh, you see a uh, Hispanic gentleman uh, kneeled over uh, some sort of uh, some sort of mechanism. You're not quite sure what he is. He says. Uh, and there's a little uh, bell that rings as you enter in. Mm-hmm. What what does his like workshop look like? Is it? Is it, it... It's kind of a mess. It's mm-hmm. very it's very sort of messy. This is not a consumer facing sort of business. Uh, most people are coming here uh, are just expecting him to build something for them. Uh, it it's just kind of very disorganized. There's metal just just everywhere. Some tools on the wall, like a half bit half built like uh like other like statues and like uh mm-hmm. and like there's an engine that. He He's working on just a whole bunch of stuff. He's uh he's just repairing anything that needs to be repaired, building things that need to be built. So but, we, I guess we can walk in. Yeah. Yep. And he says, "Uh, I'll I'll be right with you." Uh, no problem. Love the workshop. It's a beautiful uh, tapestry of ingenuity. All right. And he uh, he looks up. He doesn't recognize your voice, so he looks up and uh, is wiping some uh, some grease off his hands. He says, oh, uh, oh, uh, how, how how can I help you? Mr. Uh, uh, Sereno, we're um, happy to meet you. Um, oh, uh, uh, yes, yes, I am, I, I'm, yeah, call me, call me Greg, Greg Sereno. Greg. Uh, uh, is, is that, okay, yes. Uh, yes, it's fine. Um, we have a mutual friend, I believe, um, Addie Wilson. Oh, I don't, I don't don't know an Addie Wilson. I, I Addison, can't. perhaps? N- no, I, mm, perhaps, I've never perhaps, heard that name before. Well, you, you, your work was spoken highly of in his domicile. Uh, what, uh, what, what work are you talking about? Uh, uh, I don't... You, you see, uh, even without any sort of skill, you recognize that this guy is getting a little bit nervous about this line of questioning. Mm. <laughs> uh, it, was a, uh, it was a piece that you worked on, a Native American piece uh, with a throwing arm. You work for him, don't you? Look, uh, we're not trying to I've, get you into any trouble. I've no, yeah, please. I've gone straight. I swear, I've gone straight. Right. I don't work. I don't work for him anymore. Sure. Well, and we're and this. I told him I, I wasn't going to do it anymore, and I didn't do it anymore. But he came to me, and I gave it to him. Uh, we're we're square. We're look, square, look, right? Look, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. I don't want there to be any confusion. Now we both know who we're talking about. But Greg, boy, I want to hear you say it. So Greg is seems to be anxious to help, but too terrified to really get any actual information out. You're going to need to some, use some so sort of interpersonal I'm skill. I'm going to use flattery, okay. on which I have many points. <laughs> I have four points in flattery. So what I plan to do is, I can kind of walk yeah. it through here, but Greg, 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 listen. Um, look, I know you're a little nervous. I know this was a little bit, you know, we flew in here randomly to surprise you but honestly i just want to hear from the guy who has built so many incredible pieces of craftsmanship i mean look at this i i dab a little bit i didn't I didn't I, 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 I didn't I didn't build it i i didn't build it i just modified it but that's it uh, uh, look 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 telling I, him that he's good is not going to win him over flattery uh, okay. is not, not i have the, intimidation you can use that that's one of the skills you could use to get him to talk i just say greg we are not here to hurt you but if you cooperate with us we will leave if you don't just answer our very simple questions we don't leave so soon 
Okay. 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 It's a bit of good cop, bad cop. Okay. Um, I. It was two years ago. I did it two years ago. I haven't. I haven't seen it since. Okay. I. Um. I. Yeah. I. I bought it. I bought it from the the, the metalworks, and then then I modified it because that's what Blue Mist wanted me to do. And and I built it into the trap. And uh, but I don't I don't make traps anymore. You know I don't work for Blue Mist. Blue, you you work with them, so like Blue Mist is out of the picture now, right? So so don't I cannot see the penitent again. The I don't I don't want to. I don't uh, no. Greg, the device was modified recently. That wasn't me. I that I, wasn't me. No, 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 no. I, I haven't. I, t- I haven't I, seen I, it for Greg, two years. No, no, no. I, no. I, I promised the penitent. That I, I know I built it to kill the penitent, but then, then, uh, no, I, 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 I didn't kill the penitent. No, no you no, didn't. No, no. We yeah. are, we're, and we're aware of that. We're asking if you know who would have modified it. Somebody seems to have. They're not as skilled as you are, but somebody seems to have altered that design, Greg. I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. I everything that I had, I gave to Penitent. I gave him the receipts. Mm-hmm. I gave him the, the evidence. I, I I I told him about Blue Mist, and 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 we're we're good now. We're we're. Mm. Greg, I've had so many drinks today, and these names back and forth. Shirley Temple's all of them. I'm sure. <laughs> Wait, would we call them that yet? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> listen, she's a nice lady. Um, listen, Greg. Just use the name. You're saying penitent. You're saying blue mist. My head is all kinds of fuzzy. Let's just speak plainly here, all right, Greg? Anyone with a credit rating over four, well, almost anyone has probably heard the name, the oh, penitent, before. I uh, have then, because my credit rating, well, it started at a seven, yeah. but now it's a six. Um, uh, if you have streetwise or cop talk in particular, you have heard of the penitent. I have both of those. All right. So we both know. What are, what um, are the penitent? Oh, that's cool. I thought we were just playing it real cool. But we have heard of this. <laughs> the penitent is a figure that's been reported on in some of the newspapers, but uh, more respectable people think that it's probably just a bunch of nonsense that's been made up by the papers mm. to sell papers. There's a, you know, there's a war. Mm-hmm. Hearst is trying to move into the city and get his paper to sell more and stuff like that. Yeah, we saw Newsies. Yeah. Uh, that, wrong city, but uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, but the penitent is uh, supposedly a, the papers are calling him a crime smasher, uh, a masked figure who has been attacking uh, the gangs of the city and uh, taking them down and making the city a better place. We're gonna uh, meet Batman. Uh, Batman no, no, doesn't no. exist. No, yet. no, no, Hold no. no. We might meet the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> but there's been no real evidence that he has existed. Um, uh, but there's just been some newspaper reports that have said crazy things, but nobody could confirm it. And all the description of them are all completely different, and nobody seems to be able to like of even the draw penitent. of so, the penitent. And yeah. is it that like the penitent is one person or multiple people? And when I say that, I mean like, do people say that it's an organization, or when I or they think it's one person? There's just different descriptions of that one person. Uh, it appears to be they say it's one person, but there's different descriptions of the same okay. person. You and, could, I mean, you could talk to Serrano a little bit more about the right. penitent. Yeah. And, and the penitent, just to recap what he said, he said that he made it to kill the penitent. Was that the, the trick he said? He said, uh, yeah, Blue Mist hired me to make this trap to kill the penitent, but then, then it didn't kill the penitent, and then he got me, and then, then I, I went straight. I, 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 I straight, I promised I'd go straight. Now, okay. do we know who the Blue Mist is? Because he's obviously assuming that we know who the Blue Mist is. He thinks we work for them. From the credit rating or his Streetwise and Cop Talk, do either of us know who the Blue Mist is? The Blue Mist was the uh, nom de crime of uh, studio head Creighton Moorhead. Mm. And uh, Creighton was uh, financing a criminal empire uh, using uh, Moorhead Studios as a little bit of a front for it. Um, he was thrown off the water tower at uh, Moorhead Studios and was found dead. But you know from Cop Talk, all reports of the blue mist afterwards uh, disappeared. And there it seems that the Moorhead was probably... The, the case was closed. The case was closed. Yes. Mm. But this guy thinks we still work for Clayton Moorhead, or a.k.a. Well, this person mist. thinks we work for the Blue Mist, whomever that is. Whomever that is. He was... The, the, don't... You can't... You can't tell the penitent about me. I told... I wouldn't do... He was... You've seen him, right? He's seven feet tall. Right. He's... He, his, his face is made of fire and metal, and he... And he 
he existed in four places at once. I thought there was four of them, but there was just one of them, but he was in four places at once. That's how he sneaks up on you. You see him, but then he's behind you, but then he's there. Hmm. Now, Greg. I, I, I knew it, and I, and I, and I, I tried to fight him, but he couldn't, and then, I, then, he, then I knew, I knew that I was nothing, nothing at all. It was just, I was insignificant, and I, and I saw everything that I did. And he just, he starts weeping. Like, he's so scared, even thinking about the one time he saw the penitent. Oh, boy. Um, you can, Greg, you've got this. You, Greg. Uh, I sort of shrug, like, what? <laughs> right? I don't really do well with this whole crying thing. It's a whole deal. I'll yes. be, I'm just going to take a I, breather outside. I, I gave the, I, I, I gave the statue. To, well, the, the penitent told me a place to put the statue, and I put the statue there, and I've never seen it since. So uh, that where, was two years ago. Where was that place? Uh, I, it was a dock near where the ferry goes to Catalina. Okay. Um, and, and I didn't see where it went from there, and now I'm, please, you tell the penitent that I didn't do anything wrong, that I've been good. When was the last time you saw Blue Mist? I, I didn't see him. After I talked to the pendant, I didn't see him. I gave him all the stuff I knew about Blue Mist, and then, then, I, then I came here. Right. And then next I heard, Blue Mist was gone. Well, it sounds like you're out of this, then. Yes! Oh, my God, I'm out of this. I, I just, you know, I, I'm, I gotta get out of here. I'm gonna go... I gotta get out of the city. I, think, I gotta go to Kavina. I think you need to get away. I, I agree. I... <sighs> And you realize that he is, he's clutching his chest now. Oh, dear. Uh, and he is, because you intimidated him earlier, mm. instead of, for instance, reassuring him, uh, he has been very, very panicked. And he is, you are telling that you can see just the early signs of he is maybe going to have a heart attack. I have first aid. Can I roll? So you could do two things here. One, you can make a two-point reassurance spend to calm him down. However, that's a big spend. Or you can make a difficulty four first aid check to stabilize his condition. I'll do I'll do that one. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to spend anything on this. Okay. I'm just going to... Difficulty four? Yes. Yeah. That's a six. All right. You, uh, he, he clutches his chest and falls onto the ground, but knowing enough about first aid, you're able to, to help him out and keep him from, uh, from dying from a heart attack. Right I would also imagine of some of this is shock as yes, exactly, well. Yeah. And I, I've seen men with shell shock before. So, yes, yes. Um, and we call, uh, an ambulance for this man. Um, please. Okay. It's, it's fine. Don't call an ambulance. But you could still totally call an I, ambulance. I would like to. Okay. Uh, I do, you I do uh, not you want have saved die. someone's life. You are going to get a plus two bonus to your next stability test. Oh, because you feel better about your position in the world because nice. you've saved uh, you've saved someone's life. All right. Uh, we wait for the ambulance. Yes. And once it arrives, we explain that we were talking with him. He had a heart attack. Um, once he's taken away, I and and we will help the man. Lock up his shop. Yes. Once he leaves and he gets in the ambulance. Can I, I ask some final questions real quick of him while he's getting all prepared? For yes. The ambulance uh, to come? Yeah, thankfully, I have, I have a couple yeah, of last he, questions I want. He to was ask. gonna. He was gonna be dead, and you were not gonna be able to ask any more questions. But because he's still alive, you could try to ask a couple more questions. Greg, now that you've relaxed a little bit. <sighs> yes. Just real quick. When was the last time you saw the blue mist? Like I like I, I said, I haven't seen the blue mist since I saw the penitent. It was like a, a week before when uh, Blue Mist hired me to build the trap. Right, which was, and I'm trying to align in my knowledge of things. Was this when he gave all the information to the penitent? This was, was two years ago. Was this right before old Mike, old Clayton Cre Moorhead was thrown off of a water tower? Yes, got it. Okay, and Greg, thank you. By the way, you've been a great, great help. Again, excellent craftsmanship. You you tell the penitent I've been good. Of course, of you course. Have been. And just so I can make sure we're on the same page, because I've got different notes here. When was the last time you saw the old boss? I uh, this is like I don't know, like two and a half years ago. He he hired me to build the trap, and then the penitent came for me, and then I never saw a blue mist oh, afterwards. Oh, but I meant the penitent. Oh, uh, I I saw him that one time. I never want to see him again. Right. Two well, that's ago. probably a good. It's probably a good rule. And don't worry, we'll put in a good word for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're very kind. Is there? Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I can get out of the old boy. Yeah. I'm gonna think of like ten questions once we leave. Later on. Yeah. yeah. 
Do you, real quick. He's, I mean, he's going to the hospital. Like, maybe yeah, he's could, reachable now. Yeah. He's not shuffled off this mortal coil. Yeah. And this, why do you think the trap failed? I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to do a little extra insight to find out how we can better keep uh, the penitent as secure as possible. Why do you think the trap failed? Because the penitent could be in four places at once. His body is made of iron and fire, and he could, a spear wouldn't kill him. Hmm. Right. Good point. Or a javelin. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that's, that's really what it was. I just had a heart attack. I, I'm... Well, Greg, thank you for your insight. You've been a lot of help. And hey, do you, um, obviously you don't know much about old Addison Wilson. I, I do not even know who that is. Of course. Um, he had a manservant. His name was uh, Mr. Chan. Did you ever uh, speak with him at all? I, again, I have no idea who you're talking about. Fair enough. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> yeah, just get it's up been a, it's he been probably a... won't. <laughs> <laughs> so I turn to you after the ambulance leaves. I just go, well, that yeah. went away. I didn't think it would. That was quite surprising. <laughs> Very exciting in there. But um, it Apparently looks like he'll be all right. We're dealing with, well, yes, he'll, he'll I'm, I was more thinking about the man with the fire head and the iron skin. The crime smasher? Y- yes. Hmm. We have someone playing Scarlet Pimpernel out here, and I'm not exactly sure what to make of this. Well, I mean, crime smashing is always something very exciting, I have to say, but... Um, you have the oddest takeaway from what just happened. What, you don't think that's exciting, that a man's running around literally made of fire and metal? I mean, that's that's pretty exciting. <laughs> All right. We should probably go to the library, and I should talk to some more reasonable people. Who I know. Will probably understand what I'm getting at. I guess you're not excited about this. We should go to see some reasonable people. Four places at once. <laughs> cut All right, away. we cut away. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Friday Night Quest and our adventure in Trail of Cthulhu. Join us next week for part two. Yeah, I'm going to loot the body. So, how much experience do we get? Well, now we have a skeleton army, so that's pretty neat.